Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Cheers of Alphabet just soaring in the after hours right now, Carol. Higher after the company reported earnings. Up as we speak, uh, another 13.6% in the after hours right now. This after declaring a dividend, boosting a buyback, uh, authorizing a repurchase of up to an additional $70 billion in shares. First quarter ad revenue coming out uh, above expectations. First quarter uh, also declaring a cash dividend of 20 cents per share. All right, so let's get to it. James Chalkmock, so much to talk about. He's partner and technology analyst uh, at Clockwise Capital. He joins us from Miami. Um, first of all, Alphabet feels like I can't find anything wrong here. Walk us through, is this just kind of firing on all cylinders, if you will, and then just throwing on a dividend and then throwing on an additional yeah. buyback? Yeah, uh, first, thanks for having me. Um, you know, for Alphabet, this was a tough one, you know, because we had the meta earnings last night, you know, uh, uncertainty as it relates to the sustainability of the top line growth metrics. And obviously, Alphabet via Google uh, had, um, you know, uncertainties around their search business. And at the same time, you have this growth in CapEx spend, you know, is that going to translate over? So, you know, we were kind of debating what to do. And and uh, going into the quarter, um, we actually rotated a portion of our uh, Microsoft position uh, to um, triple up our Alphabet position. But thankfully, that worked out. But it's I think right the move. key for Google, yeah, it, well, yeah, they're both up. So, yeah, I mean, it worked out. But so why did you do say, it? What was it that you saw, um, James, in the in the Alphabet story that you said you wanted to do that? Well, the main thing was the relative valuations. I mean, okay. the expectations for Microsoft were exceedingly high, and the expectations for uh, uh, Alphabet were exceedingly low. And you look at one's trading at 22 times earnings and the other one's at 35 times earnings. So you know what kind of the risk reward is. And especially we had some sense of how things might trade uh, if they came in on a, on a bare um, kind of narrative, uh, given how Meta traded. So um, it's, it really just boils down to that. And But the fact that Microsoft was able to exceed those nosebleed expectations is a testament to the trends and the, the force of trends that we're seeing in the, uh, in the shift to the cloud and a- AI more broadly. Hey, I just want to get your thoughts on Snap because uh, it's a company you've been covering for years. You love the, to ask about that every, every through, time. through the good and the bad. Well, it, and the reason I'm asking is because shares are up, um, wow, surging as we speak by more than 20%. Uh, 25% uh, at the, at this point. Yeah. Um, this is after the company uh, reported. They are down 32% year to date. They are. That's important context. <laughs> um, <laughs> for se- the company is seeing second quarter revenue um, from one, $1.23 billion to $1.26 billion versus estimates of $1.21 billion. As Carol mentioned, it's been a brutal year so far for Snap. Um, how are you reading into these results? And do you still, you don't own Snap anymore, do you? No, no, not for a long time. Um, you know, with Snap, you know, they were supposed to be the camera company and, and transformed into, um, you know, it's exactly what they were initially, you know, just messaging and some content initiatives. But at the end of the day, you know, I think it's really, really hard for these niche platforms to scale in the manner in which is necessary to provide the differentiation to advertisers and the return objectives and, and return enhancements on the on that ad spend. So, I think that the disparity uh, between these niche platforms like a Snap uh, versus the likes of Alphabet and Meta will only increase from here. The caveat being that you have companies like Pinterest, which we used to own but sold, um, you know, just given the fact that they had our target, um, you know, have more opportunities because of the engagement that they bring that is likely to grow over time versus, you know, stick to a more... Um, static rates, uh, which is from the likes of Snap. All right, we've got to go back to Google. Forgive me, uh, Alphabet. I keep calling it Google, but That's I mean, of course, Alphabet. I know, I know. Uh, up 12.5% here, folks, in the aftermarket. This stock heading into it had about a 12% gain on the year here in uh, 2024. The stock was up almost 60% last year. But, you know, when, when you look at Alphabet, James, and you look at its business lines and its roles and its play, whether it's AI, whether it's still advertising in a big way, you know, our own Mandeep Singh saying, you know, this company is all about engagement. That's kind of so valuable. And that's going to be valuable, certainly in terms of machine learning and gen AI. This is really important mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, how do you think about, you know, Alphabet in in kind of its future growth trajectory and kind of where it goes from here? I mean, these are 
this is a pretty impressive report. But it's also, right, appeasing investors of saying, we're going to throw some cash back to you. Absolutely. I mean, any, anything with respect to returning capital to shareholders or, um, you know, getting religion on the cost side of their business and, and utilizing their cash flow for uh, more constructive purposes rather than throwing it into black holes, which is the way that they have been operating for as long as I can remember. That being said, I think that the future for Alphabet and Google, you know, is still remains a question mark. We don't know, and I don't think anyone can definitively say what that search environment experience is going to look like in the in the future. You know, when, when if you look out five years down the road. Now, the good news is all of this stuff seems to be like coming at you fast, right? All the AI, I mean, it's over the since January of 2023, it's been coming hard and fast. But the good news is on the on the behavioral aspect and the and the and the consumer experience, you know, things have changed with Chat GPT and whatnot, but things aren't changing that fast overnight, which affords Alphabet time to really figure things out, whether it's cannibalistic to their existing Ooh. search business or not. You know, I, I think we have time. So I think extrapolating too much too soon is a risk. Um, you know, so as long as they can they have the time, you know, they might figure it out. They may not. But they might. But James, I could, look into 2024 and yeah. 2025. And that's it. Could critics argue about Alphabet that declaring a dividend and boosting a share buyback potentially isn't the best use of money right now? Perhaps they should be investing more in AI. Perhaps they should be investing more in making sure this search product is bulletproof. Yeah, I mean, they're throwing off tremendous amounts of cash yeah. as it is, and uh, and they're investing a lot. And and they're and you look at the margin disparity versus uh, a meta, you know, they have a lot of cushion um, uh, there. Uh, so uh, and they're investing, you know, strongly as well. So um, I, I don't think it's mutually exclusive. Um, so long as the, um, the the ball continues to move forward which is what we need to see, and we'll see what the color commentary is on the call, I think it'll be okay. I think the longer term is where the questions linger. Shorter term, it'll be fine. All right, so let's go to Microsoft, because it's also uh, the other big one, that, or one of the big ones uh, after the close. It's up about 5% uh, here in the aftermarket. Uh, this one, sales and profit beat expectations on robust AI demand. That's the headline on our story. So quarterly sales and profit climbing more than projected, lifted by corporate demand for Microsoft's cloud and AI offerings. Revenue, as we said, up 17% in the third quarter, 61.9 billion profit, 294 a share. Analysts on average estimated per share earnings of 2.83, or $2.83, excuse me, on sales of 60.9 billion. So again, um, outperformance here. And we know that uh, Satya Nadella has been really infusing all of Microsoft's entire product line with uh, AI, technology thanks to its partner open ai so thoughts on microsoft what we got here in the quarter what it tells you about their business today and going forward yeah what, what's most amazing to me is the fact that they're able to maintain the growth rates no matter how big their revenue uh base gets and the fact that they're able to deliver the numbers that you just cited and do so in an efficient way where earnings are continuing to grow at the same rate so it's not a um there's no contra uh indicators on and you know sales versus spending um so i i think that to me the sustainability is the um the biggest uh, and most impressive component uh, of their operations and and most importantly you know broadly i think you can extrapolate that the themes um on the data center spend and and the semiconductors like the NVIDIAs of the world and, and the mm. direction of corporate enterprise and their appetite uh, for shifting from analog to digital is as strong as ever. So uh, I think it's a very, very good omen for a lot of these companies um, and, and being at the center of it. Because you can make an, an, an analogy that you want or in the first inning, third inning, whatever. But <laughs> right. I think the, the main thing is that the world is going to – I think Sa Sam Altman has this uh, – quote um, that he said, the technological changes that we've seen over the last 500 years, um, um, uh, no, the, the changes over the next 50 years will be greater than the technological changes over the next last 500. Right. You know, so th that's the pace of change that we're talking. And a lot of that's going to come in the first decade 
And these companies are all at the epicenter of it. Just want to point out, um, Azure, Microsoft's uh, cloud computing unit, um, revenue gaining 31% in the quarter above an average prediction of 29%, so picking up slightly from the 30% growth in the previous period. So, you know, that's a trend line. If you're following it, right, you want to see. I mean, there's a chance we see both of these, depending on what happens, there's a chance we see both uh, Alphabet and Microsoft uh, hit new records tomorrow in today's trade, depending on what happens. Um, okay, I want to talk, James, just a little bit about uh, Microsoft's uh, legacy here and the way that it's uh, been able mm -hmm. to shift and embrace race uh, AI. Um, where, where's the most important part of, of looking at Microsoft's growth moving forward? I mean, I know we obviously know Azure is incredibly important, but the company has made a huge, uh, huge bet on AI with open AI. Where do you start to see that investment and its relationship with open AI manifest in earnings? I think it's going to be, you know, exactly, you'll see it in the Azure business, but more broadly in the intelligent cloud segment. I mean, it, it should continue to translate on that front. But it's not just that segment, it's going to have, it's going to feed into other parts of their business too. Um, you know, on their subscription side uh, of their software services and, and uh, potentially even gaming. And, um, uh, you know, so there's, there's a lot of le levers, I think that will be pulled from that relationship. And as the world and corporate enterprise continues to move in that direction, more data is going to feed into it, which is going to fuel even more efficiency uh, with respect to the capabilities that they do. And, um, you know, Copilot, you know, for instance, is just on the, I don't want to keep saying first inning, on a day, day two of, um, of its potential. So, and there's a lot of money to be yeah. made there. Um, Look, that you'll see that I don't think is being appreciated at all, virtually at all right now. These are all different companies, but they're all working on AI. And uh, to a certain mm -hmm. extent, they're competing with each other when it comes to that technology, no question. Uh, given what we're seeing from shareholders in reaction to Microsoft and Alphabet today, uh, and given what we saw today in the session from uh, reaction from investors to Meta platforms sending shares for their worst yeah. day in months, um, what did the two companies that reported today get right, or maybe a better way to ask is, what did Meta Platforms get wrong? Um, what did Meta Platforms get wrong? Um, I think what they got wrong was largely related to the management of the expectations. You know, um, there was no indication around um, the pace of investment that's necessary to sustain the kind of growth. I mean, they talk very qualitatively about this is a big opportunity ahead, you know, all the metaverse and yada, yada. Um, but, uh, you know, there was no pushback whatsoever on the questions and commentary uh, with respect to, you know, w how we should expect um, the pace of investment to ramp to justify and, and capitalize uh, on the trends that Zuckerberg talks about. So I think it was more of an uh, expectation versus reality mismatch that probably could have been better managed. All right, let's just uh, remind everybody uh, the big earnings after the close and those that have really outperformed here and showing um, some stunning moves to the upside. Uh, Microsoft among them, that stock, as we mentioned, it is moving up uh, just about 4.4% here in the aftermarket. And the company coming out, sales and profit beating expectations, uh, lifted by corporate demand for the software makers cloud and uh, AI offerings. We talked about Azure gaining revenue alone, gaining 31% in the quarter. That was above analyst expectations. Revenue in the third quarter overall up 17% to $61.9 billion. Profit was $2.94 a share. Analysts on average estimated per share earnings of two eighty three, dollars so below what they actually came in with. And uh, the estimate for sales was sixty point nine. So again, really hitting out of the park when it comes to those estimates. Uh, and that is certainly uh, one reason why you're seeing uh, the stock, or a big reason why you're seeing the stocks uh, up, the stock of Microsoft, I should say, up at the aftermarket. Okay, let's, worth, uh, let's repeat a little bit of what we saw from Alpha. Alphabet, uh, the company's uh, first quarter uh, Google ad revenue coming in at 61.66 billion versus estimates of 60.18 billion, and the company author authorizing a repurchase of up to an additional 70 billion dollars worth of shares, also declaring a dividend, a cash dividend of 20 cents per share. First quarter revenue, uh, excluding traffic acquisition costs, uh, 67.59 billion, beating estimates of 66.07 billion. To the downside, Intel. 
Shares are down more than 8% here. Uh, biggest maker of PC processors, uh, lackluster forecast from the company for the current quarter, indicating it's really still struggling to kind of find its way back to the top, if you will. Sales in the second quarter will be about $13 billion. Uh, that compares with an average analyst estimate of $13.6 billion, according to our data here at Bloomberg. Profit, again, the outlook will be $0.10 cents a share minus certain items versus a projection of $0.24. Cents. So that's a pretty big miss. Uh, we're talking with Jay. James Chalkmock, partner and tech analyst over at Clockwise Capital. Uh, James, is there some underlying theme? We're not through all the Mag 7 companies. Uh, we've got, what, Amazon next week? And yeah, we've got NVIDIA in a while. Right? Yeah. So uh, we've got some other plays to get through. Next but NVIDIA. is there any themes that you're finding, certainly for the investment community, when it comes to especially these big tech names, uh, the Mag 7 often, who haven't always been so magnificent as of late, uh, what, they're t what they're saying and uh, kind of their impact on the overall market? Is there some big takeaway here for you I, I think the biggest takeaway is that the sellers of these data center services um, are the best place to be you know from mm -hmm. NVIDIA to Dell and those on the server side like we own VRT uh, which helps with the cooling systems um, comfort systems um, you know so there's a lot of these companies that play into building out the, 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 co the companies that are selling to the hyperscalers I think will continue to be uh, in a great position. Now, the, as far as the MAG-7 is concerned, I do think, you know, the market is still um, in, in a state of uh, choppiness and uh, volatility. And I think that's going to last until we have better clarity on what the Fed is going to do. And you saw the GDP numbers today. So there's there's mixed messages as to which direction macro is going versus tech and which yeah. one to prioritize. Because if you prioritize the economic cycle, then that means valuations are at risk. If you prioritize the tech cycle, that means that earnings are the focus. And right now we're in this world where uh, some days valuations are in focus and other days earnings, like today. Hey, um, so I think you just got to stay nimble uh, mm. at the end of the day. Hey, James, last question, 30 seconds here. I'm looking at Time U.S. Equity on the Bloomberg Terminal. This yep. is the uh, Clockwise Core Equity and Innovation ETF. It is up this year a whopping 18.3% uh, outperforming all the benchmarks. Uh, Amazon is your second biggest holding after T-bills, accounting for 5% yeah. of the portfolio. Um, we got Amazon coming up. 30-second preview of Amazon. Yeah, Amazon, it's the, it's the only of the MAG-7 that uh, we feel that we haven't cut exposure to. You know, it's a 5% or give or take weight, and we're maintaining that. Um, I think the data that you saw from Microsoft and uh, today in the release of the cloud is a very good omen. Uh, they're firing across all three of their businesses, you know, on the, uh, uh, on the grocery side, the retail side, the, um, the cloud side. And this is the first time in a while that you've seen everything going in the right direction and, and most especially on the margin. So, you know, we like the risk reward here. You know, I think next year you could get to 225. Uh, this year, probably upwards of 200. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, it's one that definitely keep in the portfolio for sure. All right. We're going to leave it on that note. Hey, James, thank you so much. James Chakmok, partner and tech analyst at Clockwise Capital, joining us on Zoom from Miami. A lot of names moving here in the aftermarket.